come to the Virgin Islands It's like one in a million It's a Caribbean A Caribbean dream What's up YouTube? What's up world? It's your boy Marky Mark back with another video And as you can tell by the topic of the video um, I'll be discussing today 10 things to know before visiting us right down here in the wonderful Virgin Islands. The Virgin Islands is home to me and I love to showcase the natural beauty of the islands and um, invite each and every one of you if you can to take a trip, take a trip, come down here visit us in the beautiful aqua blue waters of the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Sea in the northern end as well. So. I'm going to roll a little intro and after the intro drops I'll be right back with you. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. It's like one in a million. It's a Caribbean, a Caribbean dream. All right, <clears throat> and we're back. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Um the first thing I'd want to talk about is getting here to the Virgin Islands. Um the topic of discussion is going to be the US Virgin Islands specifically. There are actually two Virgin Islands. Both of them are territories, they're not countries, but they're territories of um the British Virgin Islands is a territory of the United Kingdom and the US Virgin Islands of course is a territory of the United States of America. Primarily the discussion is going to be surrounding the um visitors if you come in visiting from the US mainland and well anywhere else to as some of the things would apply to you as well. So if you're visiting us from the um US mainland, the Virgin Islands is made up of several tiny islands that is located in the middle of the archipelago of the Caribbean um sea and um known as the West Indies of course and um it's the US Virgin Islands is made up of three major islands and then one smaller island known as Water Island um getting here of course we will suggest um flying one of the um 10 major airlines that fly down here um from the US and once you get here to St Thomas St Thomas is the island on which the capital city of Charlotte Amalie is actually located uh, there is also over on St. John, you could go to St. John, you could visit Water Island and you can visit St. Croix as well. St. Croix and St. Thomas do have airports. So if you're flying in, you would be flying in to either one of those major airports, either the one on St. Croix or the one on St. Thomas. Uh, if you're going to St. John or Water Island, if you're staying on St. John or Water Island, uh, you would want to, of course, come in via the airport on St. Thomas. And uh, also in, in getting here, uh, I'd like to mention too, if you're going for the day, if you're staying on St. Thomas and going for the day to St. John, uh, it's a little 15 minute ferry ride over to St. John. I'll suggest if you're driving, you could take a car and get on the barge. Make sure that you're aware that the barge, if you drive over it, the last barge leaves at six o'clock. So make sure you're on the last barge um, heading back over on St. John, unless you plan to spend the night over there in St. John, because that has happened to a couple of people that I saw via YouTube. They got mixed up between the ferry, the passenger ferry, which actually does run as late as 12 midnight. Now you come back to St. Thomas if you're just visiting the island of St. John for the day. Now, if you come into St. Thomas and you want to go over and visit St. Croix, you can take Take the seaplane, um, which uh, flies out of the downtown Charlotte Amalie uh, Harbor area. You could also take one of the regular planes. Uh, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away um, to go to St. Croix. Or you could actually take a ferry also, which I've taken, and you can see in one of my my videos. I wouldn't recommend it. It's pretty rough. Some of the most rough waters are between St. Thomas and St. Croix. So I'll suggest just flying to go over there if you'd like to fly to go to St. Croix and vice versa. If you're staying on St. Croix and you have a couple extra days, you could come over. You're welcome to come over to St. Thomas as well. So um, in getting down here right now, as of uh, two weeks ago, they dropped all the COVID restrictions. However, it still is required that you do take and present a negative COVID test, which will be uploaded to the USVI travel portal. Um, via the particular website. Um, the link will be in the description below for the travel portal. You would have to upload a negative result of a, a COVID PCR test or uh, antigen test 
uh, that basically is uploaded four to five days before your travel to the travel portal. You would then be presented with a QR code, which you can then do a screenshot of or print it out and present it to the airport, uh, whether you come in via St. Croix or St. Thomas. And that's basically all the restrictions that they have right now. Uh, you don't have to wear a mask in any establishment. There are still some businesses, however, that will require you to wear a mask. But if you're on the outside, if it's a restaurant that's on the outside that doesn't have more than three walls, um, you don't have to wear, it's not required that you actually wear a mask. So that's what it goes um, as far as the COVID restrictions and coming down here. So that I forgot to mention is actually number two, um, the COVID restrictions for travel and coming down. The third thing that I want to mention is gonna be transportation. If you're coming down here to the Virgin Islands, I would suggest that you, you get that um, squared away before you come down. Um, if you're staying in the Tung area, they do have these local buses called safaris that you can take. They run typically between 7 in the morning to about 7 in the evening. After that, you're kind of on your own and it gets harder to catch a ride um, via taxi or catch a fare to go wherever you're going. Uh, as I mentioned, you could get via the dollar safaris, as it says in the name, you could pay a dollar to go anywhere you want in the main town vicinity. However, if you're traveling to what they call the country, um, on St. Thomas, you'd have to pay $2 to get out there. And in St. Croix, it's about the same thing too, about $2 to go anywhere on island um, with their dollar or safaris or vans. Uh, if you take a taxi, it jumps, it gets much crazy. I remember paying, I think $25 one way to get from the airport to one location and back. So it was total $50 just to go to the airport to a location and then back. Um, with the cab driver that I was using in St. Croix. So um, my best suggestion to you would be to rent a car. And if you do rent a car, be mindful that we drive on the left down here and we have very steep hills and roads and windy curving roads. Um, so if you think you can handle that, go ahead and rent a car. Make sure you rent it at least um, four weeks in advance, three to four weeks in advance to make sure that you actually do get a car and actually do keep on checking up on it, making sure that a car rental is available before you come, because sometimes they like to overbook, and when you get down here, you may not have a vehicle available to you. So make sure you do have a ride, because otherwise you'd have to depend on taxi, and taxi and fares down here um, end up being pretty pricey. You would, that would end up being the bulk of the money that you spend while you're down here. Okay, the fourth thing that I'd like to mention is this is something that's very unique to the Virgin Islands. The Virgin Islands is the only place in the world that actually has three carnivals. So depending on how your work schedule is, wherever you live, you do have three great and awesome times during the year when you can come down and party like it's 1999. Um, the carnival time is coming up for St. Thomas, which is going to be in April, which is next month. Um, recording this um, towards the end of March. Carnival time for St. John is around 4th of July weekend and then the carnival for uh, St. Croix is around the holidays, around Christmas and New Year's. So you can pick your poison, whichever island you want to come to um, and enjoy the carnival. We have three times a year that you can actually schedule it um, to come down, especially I know a lot of people might want to come during the winter, um, come down and enjoy St. Croix carnival. You could come down during the hot days in April for um, St. Davos Carnival. It's already starting to get hot and we still have three, four weeks to go to um, St. Davos Carnival and then as well to um, for St. John Carnival as I mentioned our 4th of July weekend um, and it is an, an amazing experience whichever carnival you choose to come to I guarantee you that you will enjoy yourself down there. Okay the fifth thing that I'd like to mention in the things to know before visiting us here in the Virgin Islands is going to be respecting the culture. Um, when you come down here or when anyone comes to your house or anywhere you travel in the world, there are going to be different cultures and so forth and there are things you would want to know um, before you go there. The one thing I just want to mention is coming down here, we have the lovely beaches which we like you to go out and explore and enjoy. 
Of course, when you go into the beach, you don't want to be fully clad. You'd want to wear a bathing suit. The young ladies love to wear their two-piece bathing suit and so forth. But during the time you come down here and enjoying your vacation, you may also want to go shopping. We do ask that you properly clad yourself when you go in the main street area. Don't be going on in no two-piece bathing suit because you might actually end up getting arrested um, for doing that. So don't think you'd want to be wearing the same thing that you wear into the beach downtown in the shopping area and so forth make sure you you cover up and wear i mean be covered up decently um when you go in shopping on um, when you're not on the beach when you get on the beach enjoy yourself to the fullest you know what i mean take off show up show off that two piece show off that one piece show off that whatever piece you got you know what i'm saying just make sure you respect the culture and um the way we do things down here also for example the islands are beautiful as i mentioned natural beauty and everything don't be throwing your trash or leaving your trash on the beaches. Leave the beaches actually better than the way you found it. Because um, you wouldn't like somebody coming to your house and leaving trash laying around in your house. They come to your house with, let's say, a bag of McDonald's or whatever, and they leave a half-eaten McDonald's in a bag right there um, on your couch. And they got up and left it and went. Um, these are the versions. We do live here. This is our home. And we like that you keep it um, nice and clean. Okay, the sixth thing that I like to mention when coming on here to the beautiful, lovely Virgin Islands is that the currency that we use, I know I've heard a lot of people ask and they wonder what currency do we use down here. Being the U.S. Virgin Islands, we actually do use uh, the U.S. currency and um, that's on all three islands, of course. I've also heard it asked like what language do we speak down here? The main language that we speak down here is English. The second English, excuse me, the second language would be Spanish because we're right next door to Puerto Rico and we have a lot of Puerto Ricans living in the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. And third would be basically Creole because we have a, lot, a, a large Haitian community that speak um, Patois, the French Patois or speak French itself. So um, those are the three major languages and as I mentioned, um, English being the number one language that we speak here. The seventh thing that I like to talk about um, is clothing when you come down here. Um, is, as I mentioned before, it's very hot down here in the islands. Uh, wherever you're coming from, if it's cold at the time you leave, where you leave from, I'll suggest you just um, wear like a wind jammer or some kind of light jacket. Because when you come down here, it will be hot and you don't want to be looking like a fool walking around with this big, heavy polo looking jacket. I mean, like you from the um, Arctic <laughs> North or something like that. Um, so just wear a light jacket that you'll be able to store away easily um, when you come down here. Wear comfortable clothing. Most of the time you're going to be going to the beach. As I mentioned, it's, it's hot, so wear short sleeve. Wear shorts as much as you can. Wear flip-flops if you can as well. Um, don't be wearing anything that will keep you too hot because you will be busting a sweat like crazy down here and be complaining about it. Okay, so as mentioned, the food is awesome here, guys. You guys, whatever you have a taste for we have that cuisine right here in the u.s virgin islands the food is wonderful and um anywhere you go you get whatever your house they like is the cuisine especially over on st croix you have a wide array of food um as i mentioned there's a wide array of nationalities living right here on the island of on in the islands in the virgin islands and anywhere any type of food you want we have it done here all right so you enjoy it Okay, so the ninth thing I'd like to mention is the beaches. We have beautiful beaches down here in the Virgin Islands. And um, every island has at least 30 beaches. So I could say one you could go to every day, <laughs> every day of the month. Um, of course, we have top 10 beaches, which I actually would look at bringing out as my next video. Um, the top 10 beaches to go to on St. Thomas. So I'll try to do a top 10 beaches on St. John and a top 10 beaches on uh, St. Croix as well. That I've been to and that I've enjoyed and the uh, last but not least I'd like to talk about the time zone actually when you're traveling to the Virgin Islands uh, being that the position that we're located at in the US Virgin Islands we basically don't change the time at all we don't have daylight savings time the time generally stays the same now when you guys who are living in the US change time if you're living on the eastern during the summertime so you spring forward and fall backwards so in the spring you go forward one hour um, and then you guys are on the same time with us so from spring all the way to the fall we are on the same time zone as the east coast and then now in the fall now when they go back one hour uh, we basically are our ahead 
of the East Coast and respectively will be two hours ahead of Central time zone, three hours ahead of the Mountain time zone, and four hours ahead of the, uh, the West Coast, um, the West time zone. So basically that's how it works. So sometimes you people get mixed up when they see the certain times on their ticket and so forth and like what time to get to the airport and so forth just make sure uh, if you have a, a, a smartphone once it connects to the network that you have down here in the Virgin Islands the best network to be on is, is actually um, AT&T because uh, they have the best coverage in the Virgin Islands uh, followed by T-Mobile and after that um, Verizon and a couple others if you have um, if you have T-Mobile Boost Mobile will kind of be the same thing. Well, actually, I would want to put Boost Mobile and Verizon on the same level as number three. Not that good of a service, but if you have, um, as I mentioned, AT&T or T-Mobile, you'll be fine. So um, that, that's what I'd like to share with you in terms of um, the 10 things you want to know in coming down here and visiting us in the beautiful Virgin Islands. I was trying to set up the shot even earlier to catch the sunset, but I had a little technical difficulties getting the light in, so that everything like that.